Three, two, one. Was that a one? Yeah, you're good. Oh, cool. We're here. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. I don't think we're ever going to get the hang of this. Not ever. Uh, I know. That's... I know. How do we start? Okay. All righty. So we finished up the Lillian, the Lillian. on Wednesday, and we are continuing our saga of the classic handbag patterns from the classic handbag pattern pack. So this was the Lillian. If you missed it, we did this on Friday and Wednesday. Um, so there are last two videos. You can see how to construct this beautiful bag. And today we are starting on the Alice. And right before we started, I realized that I have the wrong cup today because I brought my Star Wars mug instead of my Alice in Wonderland <laughs> mug, which would have been the correct mug for the video. But I failed, so I'm yeah. sorry. Sherry, I'm, I'm sorry. We're I'll, all, I'll try. We're all, we're all sorry. I'll try again. <laughs> so this is what we are working on today. A little overhead shot there, Nick. Boom. Mm, that's a little bright. Mm. I don't know how to change this one. Anyways, so we've got the Alice shoulder, but maybe it's okay for that. We'll just, yeah. we'll leave it. Yeah. This is a little bit bright, guys, but this is the bag that we'll be constructing today. Denny already has a lot of things done, so I'm sure he is going to tell you all about it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I've taken the liberty of just transferring all these patterns to a heavier paper. Okay. And here are basically all of the parts that we have. Uh, this is, this is the back part, and it... <clears throat> the inside of the of the back panel and it has a zipper slot and I have it cut out and I have the zipper installed. Uh, Just a zipper. Yes. Guys, we did a zipper, but you didn't get to see us do it, but it's yes. in there. Well, yeah. We can't show you everything we unless we're on 24-7. You, know? you want to do that, Denny? Let's they could just watch that. you constantly yeah. on Twitch. 24-7, yeah. That's right. I will twitch a lot, I guarantee <laughs> But anyway, this is the back part of it, and uh, it goes it goes like this. This is the inside of the back. Yes. Yeah. So and you cut you cut this one with the nap side on your on the back side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and this is the actual liner for the back, okay. which goes like this. Does this mean you're going to put glue here? Yes. That that's what that means, and that that's what that means because we have to be careful about because that's glue your this pocket part of it. Yes. Oh. And here is the the liner for the back of it, which also has that drawn out and scribbled out where we <laughs> don't glue that part, and it goes like this. All right. And then this is our actual the front the front of the when we flat. turn this over, mm -hmm. this will fold like this, and this will this is what. To, where our bag clasp goes. Guys, so isn't that the cutest the little flap you ever did see? Look at this. Didn't he use his new stamps that we got him in in uh, Dallas? Dallas, yeah. yes. Yep, we got him some Newberry Kings, which are these little uh, fan guys there. So, and then just a little finger cutting. Yeah, a little finger carving. A little finger outside. carving. Dean, Denny did not hand stitch that zipper in. You're crazy. Yeah. I could. Yeah, actually, I want to. I want to tell you this. This is stitched. You could uh, buck stitch this on. Oh, you could. You if could. you did not want to use a sewing machine for any these these patterns in this in this uh, pack have minimal. This one had zero sewing to it. It was completely mm -hmm. buck stitched together, and I believe the other one is also laced. Yes, a majority it's also of the way. Laced. Mm -hmm. But everything on here you could lace. You wouldn't mm -hmm. have to use a machine for any of it. But you could use a machine for a big part most of most of it. Of mm -hmm. it. A big part of it. Okay. So this is is the actual back and the front flap. This is the actual front okay. of the bag. And it's in two pieces. You've got this bag front, which is which is this part here. 
and it the top of it uh, skives and folds over like this and is stitched just for a nice rolled edge. Mm -hmm. And then this is the front pocket, which I have also rolled and stitched. And I've installed uh, the uh, bag clasp on the front. I could wait till it's all done and still get this on here, but it's so much easier and nicer to just put be it able on. to do it while it's out flat. That's right. Now, Denny, I have a quick question. You said that you could buck stitch this zipper in if you wanted mm -hmm. to. Do you have to do anything special on the back side because you've got the zipper tape in order to buck stitch it, or is no? It you can just you can just punch a, a stitching slots in there just like you would on a normal. And you don't have to worry order. about it fraying out. Uh, no, after you get it buck stitched, if you have some frayed spots, you can take a, a thread burner and and kind okay. of seal that that back side, but. Uh, Really, in all reality, you don't really have to worry about it because it's not going to go anywhere. Hey, Nick, could we make this a little less bright? <coughs> Excuse me. I can try. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, you can only go the wrong way, and then you can go the right way. That's that's the worst that could happen. Let me get out of your way. Here. <laughs> I think that's just the zoom, but. Uh, guys, can keep talking. There it goes. Did I do it? Maybe one one more. That's better. That's better. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm the expert. Huh? Uh, okay. Stop it. It's darker on the screen. <clears throat> on the real deal. Okay. This is the strap which I've already cut and stitched and trimmed. Uh, but that's pretty straightforward. It's just two pieces of leather that are cemented together. That's right. And I have the the rivet holes punched on the backs or on the two ends like this, and the buckle is installed on the buckle shape. And you beveled it and finished it. And it's I, good to go. I beveled it and finished it, and it's ready to go. Okay. Here is the gusset, and it's not just straight. It's got kind of a contour to it. It's a little wider down here in the middle than it is on each end. Okay. And I've uh, cut that. I punched the rivet holes. I've actually punched the, the lacing slots in it already. You sure too. did. Okay. Now what, just real quick, what thickness of leather are we using and what do you recommend? This is about four to five ounce. You can use three to four, would make a nice bag in this respect. Okay. You know, uh, because this one doesn't ha necessarily have to stand up. Right. You know, it will. Plus you do have a lot of layers that you're putting together, so that kind of reinforces things. Yeah, and when you lace it, that'll add a little rigidity to it also. Right. So. Okay. Okay. <coughs> now, I haven't put this part together yet, but I'm going to let you do some cement. You will love to do that. First thing we're going to cement will be uh, this little part to this right here, and I've got it all drawn out where you need to do that. Okay, I can do that. Michael, Denny already tooled this new pattern with this little finger carving here. He he, he tooled this pattern years ago when we did the bag, so he yeah. didn't feel the need to do it again. Um, so we've got this panel. And I have I have this this tooling pattern. I have it over there, and Tony, oh, yeah. Tony can copy that and scan it in. Scan it in for you guys if you. So want if you wanted, it. if you liked this, if you like the finger carving, yeah. Deal. That's the thing. The finger carving you can actually just do without a pattern, but it's easier if you if you have something to go by. Okay, now while while you're gluing and cementing that, let me explain this to you. Okay. <clears throat> On my pattern, I have folded it in half like this, and I've actually found the center point. I fold it in half so I can find the center point of that pattern. And I've done the same thing to this, to the pocket. Now I can set that on my actual pattern and find the center point here. So when I punch my lacing slots around here, I start right in that center. And I've done the same thing with this uh, gusset. I found the center on the gusset on, on both sides. And that's where I start punching my holes, is I start at the center and go out, and start at the center and go out and meet on each end. Uh, the reason I need the center is because, because I've got to know where to, to stop lacing this gusset 
on the outside on the gusset itself and then I have to know where to stop on the the bag front and I have made myself a little mark with an, a silver erasable marking pen right here that will be the last <laughs> hole on each side that I lace on this uh, gusset okay now I've got to start in the center here and count these holes coming around this way mm -hmm. which I have done on each one of these I have 50 holes on this side from the center to the end. Okay. And I counted 49 coming this way to the end. Now I've got to do the same thing on this gusset. And I've got to start right at the center and go around here. 49 holes. That's where I'm going to end. I've marked that with a, with a silver erasable pen. So that's where I start to lacing this. And I guess I can start to lacing this front while you're gluing that together. Okay. So let me make myself a piece of lace here. I didn't even bring a pair of quick snips. We got them right here. Okay. All right. Oh, well, you have the knife. All right, I have the knife. Hi, Tom. Hope you're doing good. Tom says hi. Tom Kilcullen? Mm -hmm. All right, Tom, how are you doing? Josh, I, I actually can't recall right now if we did a video on adhesives. I feel like we did one. I feel like that was a thing, but... Um, on which? Adhesives? Did I do one with Clayton or with Kevin? I think Kevin? we did with I, Clayton. I thought we did. We did all the finishes, but I feel like we talked about adhesives. I'll look back. I think that we have. Almost everything that I do, I just use contact cement. But, but there are a lot of things that I don't do mm -hmm. that, that something other than contact cement would be more advisable for, I'm sure. I tell you what, we have been so happy. Like, we don't use it a lot in the videos, but that Rhenia is pretty amazing stuff. Like, and it, and it even works on non-porous material. Like when we were gluing down those, those cabochons, that worked quite well. <laughs> okay. Now I'm ready to start here. And this is the side with 50, yes. So this is where I'm going to start up here at this very end. That's why I had to mark my end holes because that's where I'm going to start. And hopefully, my exquisite math capabilities. Oh, can, you, can you lace up here? Cool, thanks. Let me move. <laughs> and I don't have to cement this together, I'm just going to hold it together as, as I go. You know what, Denny? No, I don't. We're going to scooch forward a little bit. Let me get this stuck in here. That way you can work in front of you and you don't have to work on the table. There we go. Woo! Alright. Alright. I like that you're doing them in the same color. Yeah. In the series together. We, we have uh, ran out a little bit of this specific color, but we have one that's very similar for the last bag that you guys will hardly be able to tell the difference mm -hmm. so Especially unless we show them all just side by side well I I think Even we probably then, will yeah. so we have the, this one and then we'll put the Alice with it once we've got that one done and then when we work on the Ann it'll they'll, we'll just have the whole little trio how cute how cute <laughs> cute is what we're going for <laughs> And I missed a hole very beginning. Already? I did that while we were moving the table. I got, oh, okay. I got, I'll give I got that to you. Yeah. 
I stole your working surface. <laughs> okay, let's start one more time. <laughs> I always say if I don't do things two or three times, I don't feel like I've got it right anyway. <laughs> Okay, this end, since I'm starting and not going to end up here again, I'm going to tuck that end down in between the two layers. Denny, I feel like you had already put a layer of contact cement on this flap here. Did I you just get have, excited? I might. I got, <laughs> I got excited. Well, I wanted it to or be did, cemented pretty. Okay, pretty so that was on purpose. Yeah. Because it is folding. This folds across the top, so there is quite a lot of tension on the two layers. Even though they will be laced together, you want it to really stay and hold. Mm -hmm. So he had already put one layer of contact cement on here, and it had dried. And then I put another one, because contact cement sticks to itself. That's what it does. It soaks into the material, and then you put the two layers, and it's, yeah. it's gluing itself together. Yeah, and I did that yesterday, that mm -hmm. first layer. But when you put the second layer on, it reactivates that first, that first layer. One. If you if you let it dry too long, it won't do anything. But when you put that other layer on, it reactivates. That's right. Dean, it is a TS boy. That is what we've got here. This guy. Oh, our glue pot. Mm -hmm. A little glue pot. Denny has retrofitted his with a, a spon <laughs> two sponges underneath because it looks like his first sponge collapsed on him. So now it's got, and I can't really tip it. Well, I guess I could tip it this way. So Denny has two sponges down here, and that keeps the majority of his, his glue here and leaves this less full so that he doesn't have as much on his brush. And you just, you know what? You just glue those on there. <laughs> That's because the, Denny just this, makes things this. work. I just, it just kind of keeps the, the glue pot kind of tipped back and keep it all down in that reservoir. Mm -hmm. All right. So is this the most important part right here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you get those to match right, right here. Right here in this little groove? Yeah. Make sure they match right there. There? Yeah. Okay. And there you go. Perfect. There. Perfect. So that's getting these little guys, this tucks in. So this will be covered. So this is the most critical part of the gluing. And then the rest of it should just lay down. And then we're going to trim to fit. Right. And next, that looks good. It does look good. good. You did a good job. <laughs> After you get this other piece glued on, I'll trim this. This other piece fits like this. We want to fit it just as close as we can. I'll trim a little bit of that off after everything's said and done. Okay. So we're marking the line. So I'm going to glue across the top of this yeah. now, and then I'm going to glue all through his squiggly lines, and I'm going to glue all through these squiggly lines, and then those will match up and we'll have a pocket. Yeah. Okay. And on the actual pattern, mm -hmm. I actually machine stitched this front part here, but I think we're going to buck stitch it. Oh, okay. This time. That way we won't have to use the machine in the video. Perfect. And that'll look good. Yeah. All right. Michael, we do plan on doing the teddy bear one of these days. We might kind of save it for the fall when it's shearling season again. We'll see. Do we have a shearling <laughs> season? I like to think of fall as the is that shearling season. Like the hunting season for shearling. <laughs> yes, that's when we call the herds of <laughs> um, herd. sheep. Do you want me to go all the way to the zipper line? Yes. Uh, Maybe a little bit like quarter to, to this. Okay. Like a school line or something like your craft class. <laughs> <together>. <laughs> this is our craft. This is yeah. Liz and yeah. Denny craft I mean, time. Is, yeah. yeah. It's craft. Actually, that's what we should call these Liz and Denny craft time. There you go. Got manual from Spain. Ooh. Welcome. I'm having 
a lot of trouble getting started here. Denny, that was your only job. I just needed you to get started, and I could <laughs> I could do the rest of it. <laughs> well, I'm still trying. <laughs> Uh, get this done. We have split beam Terry on Twitch wanting you to model it for us, Denny. What do you think? Yeah, Terry. No, you know Terry that comes in on retail. He would like you to model the purses. Me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will. <laughs> Did you register me? <laughs> Wait, huh? A Scooby Doo moment there. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. I have a lot of those. I got a lot of those. Uh, Me and Scooby. I didn't grow up with Scooby, but I had a lot of contact with him later in life. <laughs> I think he rubbed off. <laughs> I grew up with Howdy Doody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. We didn't get a television at my house till I was about to... I think I was five years old, and of course it was not color, because at that time a color te a television period was, was pretty, uh, pretty highfalutin stuff. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And we finally got one, and I remember my folks wouldn't let me watch it except to, when I got home they'd let me watch one thirty-minute program. Mm -hmm. it was, it well, that was, was probably all there there was on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there were like three channels, period, <laughs> period, and most of those were like snow covered. It was like watching a snowstorm in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. But Howdy Doody would come on, and I got to watch that, and then they'd make me turn it off, and I'd have to go out and play, which was great. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't complain about that. That yeah. was okay. Yeah. See, we didn't have video games. We had. You, I mean, you barely had a TV. Yeah, we barely had a TV. You, you could have probably played some cards if you wanted to. Yeah, probably. But <laughs> I had two sisters, and they weren't much fun to play cards with. No. What are your sisters' names? Vicky is my older sister. She's two years older. Okay. And she lives in Denver. They have a house in Phoenix and a house in Denver. Mm-hmm. And they go back and forth. Mm, so they're true snowbirds. Yeah, yeah. And then I have a sister, Krista, who is uh, four years younger than me, and they live in Denver. Oh. My mom told me a story that she would try and sneak TV time in, but she had to be strategic because my grandpa could come up and hold his hand against the TV side and know whether or not it, it was, was hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember we had to go to bed at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. when, when I was that age, and my sister, Vicki, and I. And we had to sleep in the same room, and she had her bed on one side of a nightstand, and I had mine on the other side, and we had a lamp in the middle. And we'd turn that lamp on, and, and Vicky would say, let's talk. And I'd say, okay, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> She'd say, I don't know. <laughs> she just wanted to chat with you. Yeah. Well, now but, we know why you are the way you are. Yeah. <laughs> because you're <laughs> yeah, and then after we got tired of trying to figure out what to talk about, we'd say let's sneak down the hall and watch television, because they, my mom and dad, would be down watching television still. You know, they'd watch the news oh, yeah. and all that. Well, we'd get down there on our like this, and just be behind real, the door, be real quiet. <laughs> yeah, because they couldn't see us because the couch was kind of in the way. Uh huh. You know? That's funny. Yeah, yeah, and if they ever got up, we'd have to hurry and sneak back to the bedroom. <laughs> so my, my parents were quite strict. And during the school year, when I was younger, after middle school for me, I was the youngest out of all of our kids. And um, after middle school, they loosened up a little bit. But when I was in elementary school and my two older brothers were still in school, um, they used to take the TV away during the school year and they would put it in the attic. Oh, yeah. And my oldest brother, he, um, yeah, because there was no time for that. That was, <laughs> we, there was, yeah, there was no time for that. It was uh, too distracting. Because um, at that time, there were more than just the three channels, and they had shows on, you know, all the time. And uh, so my oldest brother would sneak up there, and he would hook the TV up. And then we would sneak into the attic, and we would watch TV <laughs> in the attic. 
was blazing hot and you're sweating. Yeah. Because it's like blood. legit attic. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't have air conditioning in my house either. My mom didn't believe in that. So what? it was, uh, yeah, she grew up on a farm in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. She was, there was, there was no time for TV or fun. No, we fun. had fun. We would go floating every year. It was a good time. There was, that was our fun. Um, Denny, I kind of want you to line this up, or at least tell me that I'm doing it right. Okay. Uh, let me help. Yeah, let me help. you. Here, you, you lay. Yeah, here, you I can do this. You I'll line that this. up. All right. And if I do it wrong, I'm still going to blame it on you. That's okay with me. Okay. Are you leaves in left-handed? Is that what's happening here? No. <laughs> Is that a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. I don't know. You know, when, when, when Jeff, uh, has those classes, he always says, are you guys left-handed or right-handed? And I didn't know there was a difference as far as lacing goes. I just lace whichever way. However, I have tried to lace backwards before, and that's very difficult. So maybe there is a left and a right. I feel like there is, and I feel like I'm backwards. I feel like I really messed you up, huh? <laughs> off down here and that's another thing when you lace something you don't have to have perfect edges because oh, your lace is going to cover a lot of stuff up and it will help you out a lot You know what, Jeffrey? That is a good question, Denny. Why are you lacing with the gusset as the face instead of the bag face as the face? Because... <laughs> you no, know, I hadn't thought about that. Maybe that is a good point. Yeah, because that's the... Maybe you ought to start at the other side. <laughs> Denny will come around. But Denny, remember, I can't start. I can only keep going. Okay, well, let's quit going there. Let's get you started on the other side. Okay. Just kidding. We're going to do this for the third time. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffrey. We would have been fine without this. <laughs> okay. So while you get that restarted, Rommel asks, uh, what is the best size threads to use for both hand sewing and for machine sewing that will look good on a 12 to 13 ounce belt? Um, typically when we're sewing like a conceal and carry that's getting to that thickness, we will use 277 on the top and a 207 on the bottom. Um, you know, if you've got a class three or a four or they are equivalent in whatever machine it is that you've got, that's pretty standard. I mean, you, you can sew with 346 if you just want a really heavy stitch, but I think typically we've got 277 on the top and then, uh, 207 on the bottom for our conceal and carry style belts. And then if you're hand sewing, um, whatever weight thread you want, but um, like if you're using the Rhino thread, the thicker of the two is probably gonna be, you know, the most visually appealing if that's what you're going yeah. for. Yeah, it's probably equivalent to about a 207, I mm -hmm. would think. Who is this? That gave yeah. Jeffrey Joseph. It's his fault. <laughs> we were just fine until you discovered our, my uh, lack of thought. <laughs> it's Friday, guys. It's yeah. just a discovery. Everybody. Uh, hey, Nick, you want to move that camera up just a tinch? <coughs> I guess you can go back to the overhead. Actually, comes and goes. It comes and go. we come and go from the cameras. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> We're getting it. 
I like the overhead sometimes, but then, then the back of his head gets in there. And then I, yeah, till my have, big head gets yeah, in yeah. the way. <laughs> Life is not all that simple when you're trying to do this in front of a camera. Thanks. I'm just about to give it back to you here. Okay. One more. That was a secret code. One more. <laughs> I have a lot of people liking the color of this, and then some people not liking the color. Well, everybody gets their own opinion, yeah. and we just may not care about yours. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way it goes. <laughs> All right, now let me see if I can. As I learned this morning in the shop from Clayton's wonderful meeting, that sometimes you just got to not care a lot about what people think sometimes. But just the right amount. You need to care... Just the right amount. Yeah, just stay in the middle. The tricky part is figuring out what that amount is. Exactly. I was going to say, Denny, these people probably want to watch you cutting these sad laces that you just worked on. Makes me want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Manuel says, cool name for purses, but when you do the Karen, I'm not watching. That's okay, Manuel. <laughs> Neither will I. That one would be too much. We shan't make a Karen. She would be too moody anyways. <laughs> Not today, Karen. Not today, Karen. <laughs> uh. All right. Oh, once again, I think we're using the same color lace that we used on this bag, which is the 8th inch maroon classic kangaroo that we carry. <coughs> oh, apparently it's Friday the, the 13th. Oh, that's, that's yes, tomorrow Yes, it is. I'd forgotten about mm -hmm. that. I was going to mention that. That's why we goofed up. Exactly. Right there. The moon is, is weird today. The moon is weird. <laughs> Now I'll go back to my rat killing. Back to your rat killing. Sorry, <laughs> right, I play music. You gotta talk a little louder than that. <laughs> what? I was trying to get Nick's attention without being loud. I music, so you gotta talk a little louder than that. And then under both, that was I messed up my first stitch, and I was like, "What did I not do? I didn't go under. Didn't go under the X." I just went under the top one, and I was like, this looks weird. I got it now. I'm good to go. <laughs> Make the Karen out of the ugliest leather that is in the inventory. Oh, I can name a few. <laughs> you remember that neon cheetah print? Oh, yeah. oh gosh. <laughs> we made that bucket. On the steals and deals right now? <laughs> yeah. You go pick your other stuff up tonight. Now I'm going to punch lacing slots, and that'll cover up a lot of excess noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. You Get just, hands. You got me right there. All yeah. right. Hey, guys. Spotlight. You're watching me. <laughs> you have really good hands to watch lace. Yeah. <laughs> I like okay. how you accessorize as well. When I punch these holes, I've got this center spot uh, marked also. So that's where I'm going to start with these holes on the bottom. I think I'm going to get a piece of granite over here. It won't make quite as much noise. Hey, Looms. I'm going to punch all the way around. Oh, and then one other thing I was going to mention, depending on the style of clasp that you use, you may or may not have wanted to install this before you glued those together. So if we're using a uh, 
a little tuck clasp. So our front will punch a hole all the way through and you'll have like washers on either side that will make everything look nice. But if you're using like a low profile, like magnetic clasp that needs to be housed, it's got the prongs on yeah. it, then you'll want to do that before you glue these two panels right. together. So just keep that in mind Right, and if you're making this. And the the clasp we're using, a lot of times it might not want to be in exactly the same spot, depending on the leather that you're using, you know, the right. stiffness and, and uh, everything. So I like to, to wait till everything's put together before I set that uh, front part of that clasp. Supergirl said that she uh, got married on Friday the 13th, and after 45 years, she's trying to decide if that was a lucky day or not. <laughs> I did the same thing, Friday the 13th. <laughs> did you? Yes, I did. And it, it was supposedly on purpose, according to my wife. <laughs> I mean, she's sassy enough. I can see that. Yeah. She, yeah. She said, we She'd need, go with that. We need to do that, she said. So we did. So we did. <laughs> Amy, can you tell us your guys' meeting story? Our meeting story? Yeah, how did you guys meet? How, how Gosh, you I don't even life? remember. <laughs> We've known her for that long. Well, yeah, I've known her for quite a while. Uh, I don't know. We were just in the same places for a while. And she used to come into the store here, too. Oh, yeah, because she's a rock person. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a bead person. And, uh, you know, I saw her, and she told me, I, you know, there was, there was nothing at all that went on between us. And uh, she said, I'm getting ready to go to New Zealand to visit my daughter. And that's the last I saw her for a year. <laughs> and then I ran into her again somewhere. I forget where it was there, too. And uh, I said, I thought you'd left forever. And she said, no, I was just gone for three months. I said, okay. As long as you can be gone. Yeah. But uh, then we started seeing each other, and voila. <laughs> Here we are. That's the whole story, you guys, as much as you get. It's a short one. <laughs> I need to finish this little part right there. We go. You know, sometimes when I lace, I I don't lace very often. Every once in a while, I will be conned into it by somebody like me but like you um i always forget how nice it is it's actually quite relaxing it is uh -huh. it's it is definitely therapy for me like a lot of people get really uh, oh they get antsy when they lace because because they, they want to be done <laughs> that's how you miss holes right <laughs> <laughs> And just find yourself a movie and have a good old afternoon. Yeah. Because it will take all afternoon. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do when I hand sew. I just find something, usually something I don't have to pay super close attention to because you got to look at what you're doing. Like a podcast but or cool. yeah, it's a podcast. Or, you know, I'll watch Friends for the 50 millionth time. <laughs> Mm. I did. I might start rewatching Call the Midwife. That was pretty good. And you know, I've never watched that. What, is that a good? I love series? it. But I do love period pieces. So it's like early 1900s, early to mid 1900s. Um, you know, like London. But I do love my period British shows. That's that's my jam. <laughs> and then also, you know what? Those ladies are just pretty amazing, and I love the characters, and it's, I love it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Did you ever watch Shameless? No, I have not watched that. <laughs> is that pretty funny? Oh, it's crazy, yeah. <laughs> the American version is really good. I started trying to watch the British version, which was the original, uh -huh. and I couldn't wade through that. But the American version, I forget the guy's name. It stars in that. He's an alcoholic... And uh, it, it's just really funny. It's Charlie sad. Sheen. Huh? I said Charlie Sheen. No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I mean, in the movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, they're crazy people. They're in Philadelphia, if I remember. Mm-hmm. In Philadelphia or Chicago? Was it West Philadelphia? No, Were they born south, and raised? They're on the south side. <laughs> it must be Chicago. Chicago. Chicago, south side yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Because that's kind of the, the poor, shoddy side of town, and that's, that's what it's all about, because they're poor, shoddy people. <laughs> And proud of it. <laughs> I did just finish the last season of Ozarks. That was that was fun. I'm kind of sad that it's over because I really did. I mean, we're in the Ozarks, so it really hit home. You know, like I could relate to the lake, the Ozarks, and the people a little bit. Um, I mean, not like drug, drug not the drug cartel people, yeah, what just are you the. To say? <laughs> The regular just, people. Just the money part. Is that side job? <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike wants to know, Debbie, when you're going to get a tattoo, you got to jump on this bandwagon. A tattoo? Yeah. I don't know. It's... I'll do it for you, Denny. <laughs> Holly's willing That's... to tattoo anybody. I'm sure. Are you a tattooer? Uh, you can say that, I guess. Give me She's a, a hobbyist. Give me yeah. a sharp nail and some indie ink, and yeah, I'm a tattoo artist. <laughs> How about this? Uh, I'm a tattoo artist, but not professionally, so don't expect it to be fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right, Denny. You ready? To, okay, I'm yeah. going to show you how to splice. Okay. You're going to make me do it, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. It's very simple. Okay. You, you will be amazed. Should I complete okay. this one? Yeah, no, you're doing fine. Okay. Right there. Yeah. So go, I should complete go through it? the bite. Okay. You call it the cross. It's it's the bite. Yeah, I remember that from Spencer. Yeah. Okay, so I went okay, through the bite. Pull it up snug. Okay. Okay. Now go back through, but don't go through all of it. Come out in the middle there. Okay, come Just, out. So I'm going to go through yeah. my front hole. Yeah. Two, and then I'm going to yeah, come out. Come out in the middle. In the middle. Okay. Okay. Now, let's just bring it out. Michael, here. I do love the Outlander series. I haven't watched the last season because I, I don't have stars and I had to wait till, for it to come out on Netflix. I wish I could be a time traveling medic. <laughs> a medic? <laughs> this is pretty great. Wouldn't you love to go back in time and, and like, even as like a person that really knows nothing about medicine, I still know more than everyone in history. Oh, yeah. You'd be because okay. Because we like, I forgot about that. Just we? take some penicillin with me and we're good to go. People will think you're <laughs> a witch. Little Advil. Yeah, they would. They would think that I'm a witch and they would probably burn me. So oh, that so would. Like probably, probably not, actually. History is a bad time for most people and, you know. Especially women. Especially women. Yeah. Wasn't great. All right. Okay. Now, now I come out through. Come out through that hole right And I've there. got this. So I've got my yeah, nap just, on the top and just, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you were finishing a, mm -hmm. a, a regular. Uh, so we're going to come out yeah. through the hole. Yeah. Pull it all the way up. You leave yourself a tag about like that. Okay. On the outside here. Okay. Now okay. come around and go through that next hole. Through the bite? Through the hole. Yeah, through the hole. Okay. Oh, no, no I need to you're go right. Through the bite. Go through the bite. Okay. You're through the bite. You're Shh. right. I thought you didn't know how to do this. <laughs> Sometimes I know what's happening. So we go through the bite. Pull it up nice and snug. Okay. And then we're going to yeah. go... Okay. No. Nope. First, let's pull these up. Give a good tug on our strings. Yeah. Nick, you're going to go to the let's, let's leave ourselves just a little bit there. Okay. So and that's then, just a little tiny tag. Then let's take this and tuck those down inside. Okay. Now okay. just go on and lace like nothing ever happened. Everything is fine. Everything is great. Because it is. You will never know you spliced right there. Boink. Okay. 
Good to go. Aren't you thrilled? Here we go. I am. I am so thrilled. <laughs> Split Beam said he, or Terry, said he caught up on Yellowstone last night. I, I know you like to watch that show. Oh, I do. I can't, I can't get the, the current season while they're on because I'm cheap. <laughs> but after the season's over, I can catch up on, I think it's Peacock is what I see them on. There's so many streaming services. I know. It's ridiculous. Everybody's always telling me about shows, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, that'd be fun to watch. And then they're like, it's on Hulu. And I'm like, hmm, I don't do that one. Or it's on Peacock or whatever. I don't even know anymore. Yeah. Jen and I are always afraid that we just aren't going to be able to watch the show because the person that we've been uh, mooching off has decided to stop playing the mooch off <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we either are the people that the people mooch off of, so. <laughs> no. You got the, the wrong end of the stick. I know. No, Michael, I did not see that. Is that real? Chad, do you know, is there a new Game of Thrones? Uh, yeah. It's not out yet. Oh, it's the, it's the, one of the prequels, right, that they were going to do? Yeah, I have not seen that, Michael. Maybe it comes out. Really? You know what? After that show ended, I stopped thinking about it because I was so mad and disappointed that I literally, it used to be a thing that I talked about all of the time. And then when it ended, I was so upset at the ending that I just stopped thinking about it. And I was like, it's over. I'm done. Okay, that's from August. I just, I just spent years of my life waiting yeah, we'll on this amazing ending. Happens. And it's just, everything's just the same. I hate that. Nothing is different. And how was Braun not dead? Like I need I needed him to die. That needed to happen. And it didn't. And I was of all of the people that could have died. That did die. All the people that did die. And he wasn't one of them. Probably the most most disappointing thing. You can think I'm silly, but I have never watched one episode. And I will never tell you to. I used to tell people to all the time. I <laughs> watched that show now. three times. Three times through. Except for the last season. Because then I stopped thinking about it. I Even I read all the books, too. Like, I've read all of the books up until I stopped writing them. So it's, uh... I'm done talking about it. Over. <laughs> okay. You're Terry still... said we need to watch Heartland. Have you watched Heartland? Oh, I yes, I have. I have not watched that. Guys, this is going to be another uh, lace em up kind of video, and I expect Wednesday will be the same. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do other things now? Well, I don't know what else to do. I'm just confused. Oh, that's cool. I guess we could start and we could lace against each other <laughs> <laughs> on the you same one. On the same one. <laughs> See how tangled up we could get. Well, I suppose you do have to lace all of this and then come around. Yeah, I could do that. I could I could start lacing. And then we'll that. just lace until yeah, we're we'll, done. We'll just lace till everybody What gets else do you guys want to talk about today? Because uh, we're just lacing. I'm leaving for New York tomorrow morning. So that's exciting. Gonna go to the ballet. Gonna go to the Guggenheim, gonna see the catacombs, gonna go to a play. Has Jacob got you all lined up for all that stuff? Yes. I, I assume so. <laughs> you I bought the tickets to the play, so that one was on me. And then otherwise he has the ballet stuff figured out. So yeah, I, I think I think that we're all set. So that's exciting. Well, Exciting for me. Hopefully I'm going to eat some delicious bagels because I do love some bagels. And I'll be in New York. Going to do a lot of walking because I'm also in New York. That's what people do in New York, isn't it? Walk, yep. Walk and eat bagels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to guess at this and start about right here. And if I'm wrong, I can fix it off camera. Okay. <laughs> I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> when he's back in a safe zone. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sure does get fun going around this corner. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of got to scrunch things up. Terry, when do you leave for your cruise? Isn't it soon? Any other leather questions? Anything? Anybody need anything out there? <laughs> we started. Started something. Yes, actually, we will be at Sheridan. Um, Rusty, Brandon, Chad, and Ryan, I believe. Is that the group, Chad? Yes. That's growing? Yeah, so we will be at Sheridan. Uh, Chad will be presenting some information about the Glowforge. Um, and then I guess Lindsay will probably also be there, I'm assuming. No, no? Brandon, Rusty. Oh, so just the boys, just the boys trip. Well, Lindsay got out of that one. So, uh, yeah. So expect to see the group there, and they will be doing, is it two presentations? Uh, yeah, Friday and Saturday at the workshop. So we've got workshops Friday and Saturday, um, showing off the Glowforge machine. That's we're going to give one away, too. Oh, yeah? yeah? Nice. Yeah, so show up and sign up that raffle. That'll be a good one. Yeah. A free Glowforge. How much better can it get? That's right. Supergirl, you should hashtag us when you get it. What is she getting? She's going to get a yellow tape package coming today. Woo-hoo! I like lots of goodies. Is this pattern also machine stitchable? Yeah. Yeah, I think you could definitely sew this with the machine. I mean, you're going to have to go around the gusset, which is always a little bit cumbersome with the machine, but I, I feel like you might thin down your gusset a little bit if you were going to do that. I don't know. This leather's pretty flexible, I think. Yeah, you could. You could machine sew this. Oh, Dean. Dean, you don't. You really don't. Can you guess what question Dean asked, Denny? It's about a zipper. It's not about a zipper. It's about the other thing that Dean asks about. Oh, he said, he said, I need to know what kind of glue you're using. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of yellow colored. It's real sticky stuff. What do we call it? Uh, we call it, you already know the answer to this question. That's what we call it. It could be masters. Or Not barge. Or barge. Actually, I think this is masters. Yeah. That I have in here right now. I'm pretty darn sure. Ha, see Dean, it's different. It's different today. Oh, thank thanks, thanks for asking. Whew. That was a close one. <laughs> William says, I need some stitchy needles. We got them. Unless you need a size 21 for a heavy stitcher. And then I cannot help you. I cannot help anyone with a size 21 for a heavy stitcher. Because they just are unfindable right now. So, stop asking. Stop asking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Josh found the adhesive video. I knew there was one out there. I was, I was pretty sure, pretty sure we did that. So I'm glad you found it. Thanks. Yeah, I feel like I'm off, but I don't think that I am. I haven't missed any holes. Let's 
see here. I am, oh, cool. He's going to Sheridan. Well, I hope you have a great time. I've gotten to go once and you live just over the mountain. Um, so you already just enjoy the beauty of that area on a daily basis. Um, but it like just the scenery was spectacular to behold when I was there. It was a very calming place shared in Wyoming with all the gazelles everywhere. Lindsay and I had a gazelle counting <laughs> competition. Um, <gasps> I have a story actually. Okay. Okay. So I was walking my dog last night and we were coming. So I, we live like at the very beginning of like a cul-de-sac and, um, and so you, you dead. So you, when you turn down to come to our street off of the main road, you dead end to our street and then, you know, you take a, take a left. And, um, anyways, so I'm coming down that main street that, that tees into my road, which is a dead end. And there is like a little teeny little wooded space at the end. And we do live kind of close to what I like to call a little stream, but my family always makes fun of me for that because they say that it's not a stream or a, a river, but it's barely a creek, but I like to call it my little river. So whatever you guys, anyways. Um, and so I'm walking down the street and there is a deer that runs down the road right in front of me, like going towards my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, you you, like you're not there. Like, well, I mean, I was like a block down the road, you know? Still, yeah. Still yeah. And, the, and just in the middle, I mean, I live in this middle of Springfield. There are some wooded areas around my house, but they're not like large wooded areas. It's like a wooded trail, you know, like we've, that far. yeah. So there's just a deer. Now I bet it came from Nathaniel Green because every once in a while you'll see some deer at Nathaniel Green. And then, so anyways, but yeah, just a deer just running down my road and I get out my phone and I'm trying to call Chris and be like, there's a deer on our road. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make it out in time to see it, but there was a deer on my road last night. Um, Latigo had a question. Okay. If I wanted to get Lace to learn, but still good enough to do a, a project with, what would you recommend? Something between plastic and kangaroo? Yeah, there's calf lace. That's the thing between plastic and kangaroo. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to, like, really practice, I mean, you can get a spool of plastic lace. It's not going to lay as well for you because it's plastic. Um... But they're like six bucks, so it's yeah. really it's a really really cheap way. But I think the the calf lace is maybe like fifteen to twenty dollars per spool, so it's not that bad. You still get like yeah, fifty yards. Fifty yards. Spool, I'll yeah. link in. Uh, so point. okay, yeah. So and that would be because it's still going to hold up well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The the only thing about the kangaroo lace, it's it's uh, it's very strong, very resilient, and forgiving. Mm -hmm. You know. All the other lace, but when I first started lacing, there you couldn't find kangaroo lace. All you had was calf lace. That was the best there was. Huh. You well, know? yeah. There's nothing wrong with calf lace. Yeah, there, it's been around for a long, long time. That's that's used to be the standard of the industry. Yeah, there are. I will say. I mean, you have way more options in kangaroo than you do have in calf. Like calf is going to come black, brown, and tan. Yeah. And that's what calf lace comes in. You don't have color selection. You don't have the variety. Um, and so that is one thing. The kangaroo, my goodness, I think we carry like 50 colors of, of yeah. kangaroo lace. Yeah. So you, you have a lot more variation and options in the kangaroo. Let's see here. Uh, Brenda, we are working on the Alice shoulder bag from our classic handbag pattern pack. Um, This one, this is the bag that we're working on today, right here, Brenda. So it is a paper purchase pattern only. We do not have a downloadable version yet. We are working now that we've got the whole download situation figured out for our, our website. Um, we will start to digitize a lot of things, especially for the international customers. But at the moment, it's just a paper pattern pack that you can purchase. Um, uh, Denny, are you going to the heart of Texas leather trade show? Well, you know, <laughs> I've never been to a trade show, to a leather trade show. So, and and I think to 
to teach at something like that. It's probably invitational. So, no, I haven't been invited, but thank you for asking. <laughs> closeout item so if you're looking for some budget lace just to try out that would be a great option and then I also linked a regular stock item awesome thank you so much if I've got something to add as far as just starting out to lace if you are, are wanting to just learn how to lace I would get eighth inch lacing as opposed to 332nd okay just simply because it's so much easier to handle 332nd is on the verge of being round and it's <laughs> oh. hard to keep it straight keep from twisting it and uh, yeah uh, that's all I got okay <laughs> let's see here little fear ask if 21 is the heaviest stitcher no 20 so when you're talking about the class 3 and the class 4 and the king cobra and your heavy <laughs> stitcher machines size 21 needle is the smallest needle and everybody wants a size 21 so i assume that maybe they can sew 69 thread which it's really not made to do um we've just suddenly like the last six months had a ton of requests for size 21 and i really don't understand why people with class threes and fours are wanting to sew with a 21 and a really small thread um i mean i Yes, you want your one machine to do everything, but those are not the machines that, that sew lightweight leathers and with a really fine thread. That's not what yeah. they're meant for. Um, so unless you're a sewing machine mechanic or really, really uh, you figured out how to do that, I don't typically recommend it. Um, and so usually like the, the heavy stitchers are going to start with at a 23 and then you go up to a size 26, I think, with yeah. your heavy stitching needles. Yeah. It a heavy stitcher, I would say the, the lightest leather, the lightest thread that it will stitch nicely will be a 138, mm -hmm. which, yeah. which is what I've always used, you know, because I've always had just one machine, one heavy stitcher, and uh, a 138 is what I'd use for all my finer projects, right. you know. Yeah. Let's see here. So we got that one. Dean wants to know about my neighbors. I mean, they're... They're still kicking. I, I saw the the old guy. They probably hate me right now because the bamboo is starting to grow. I hate me right now because the bamboo is starting to grow. I hate the bamboo. It's like growing in our little patch of grass between our two houses. I, when I went to mow for the first time two weeks ago, I think was the first time I had to mow this year. And like that had bamboo stalks that were already like this high where no bamboo should be growing, like in the middle of the walkway between our two houses, because the stupid roots have, you know, gone under my fence, obviously, cause they don't care about the fence. And then just like started a string towards his house. And, um, I'm just, I'm not thrilled about the bamboo. I'm sure they're not thrilled about the bamboo. I'm, but I don't talk to them about it because I'm embarrassed about you could, it. You could say, hey, folks, this was not my idea. I, I didn't plan this. <laughs> Linda planted this. Like, it wasn't me. I only met Linda once when I bought her house at the mortgage place, and I I thought she was a nice lady when That's I met her. That's probably why she sold the house. Yeah, because she was like, oh, crap. I, I made a mistake. Get rid of this stuff. <laughs> it was real cute when she moved out. It was like this teeny, like two little teeny patches. It was, it was, it was adorable. Now it's a jungle. Well, get out the machete and the blowtorch. I know. I have. I have the machete. I have this knife friend in Canada, and he makes a tool. I can't say what the tool is called here. But if you look up... <laughs> um, Mike. Mike's knife and tool. Mike. Oh, my God. I know his last name. What is his last name? He calls me sometimes and orders belts. Hang on, guys. I need to tell you. He's a fun guy. <coughs> Mike Jones. Isn't that a good name? You just got to say the whole thing. Mike Jones. So he... Uh, just rolls off your tongue. Yeah. He makes a tool. Yeah. He, he sent me one that I use to cut down my bamboo. It looks like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the tool. Like a meat cleaver. Yeah. It's a so, bamboo cleaver. Me and that tool, we go outside and we chop down bamboo. 
Chad and I will come over to your house and like rip it out of the ground. Like, well, because we want to sell it. We want to take it from you. And sell oh, please. <laughs> I have a whole pile that I cut down last year that's all dry if you want it. Well, we like to grow the live ones. We, oh. we're, we're working our way up to growing and selling plants like at a craft show. So we're gathering as many species as we can. You can have these gigantic. They're oh. tall. They're oh. taller than my house. And I have a tall two-story house. That's tall. Yeah. Taller than Jed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just like a couple feet. Oh, just a little. Yeah, like 50. <laughs> They're really tall. I'll ask you. Let's see here. I'll bring you some, <laughs> some, I've... some sort of artichoke that my wife has. Not Hungarian artichoke. <laughs> some kind, It looks almost like a, a piece of ginger or a or a potato root, hmm. but it's edible. Supposedly really good. Supposedly. It's very prolific, too. It grows to be about 29 feet tall. I need a new piece. Okay. Although, I will say, it's noon. Yeah. And we're just, this is what we're got to do. Yeah. So now that I'm, you know, we could probably. That's a good chunk of it, though. Yeah. Don't lose the needle. So we've got this. We'll go here. Mm. Yeah. In this way. It's going to look just wonderful. Just like that. So this is where we're at. There is just a lot of lacing. So this lace needs to continue from here all the way around over here. And then Denny's got to just lace this. And then once we hit that, then you'll just lace all the way around the back. Um, and then I assume you attach the strap yep. with some rivets. And then we'll put the clasp in here. Yeah. Oh, and then you have to buckstitch this. have to buckstitch that mm -hmm. also. Yeah. yeah, we're peeling up a little bit here because. Well, that's all right. You might actually, I don't know if you can still do it, but you might rough that up and restick it. Ah, when I buck stitch it, it won't go. It'll stay down. All right, so we've got a couple. Tori, I do know how to kill it. It's just getting it all cut down first, and then it's. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, does anyone know how to tighten a mall head? Mine is loose and wonky, and I've never had to tighten them before. There ought to be a bolt on, on the end, like this. A lot of times you can tighten that up. Sometimes there's a, like this one has a, a bolt. I, you can put this in a vise mm -hmm. and, and crank actually it. twist it tight. If You could kind of take it apart and put some Loctite on it. Oh, yeah. Or or some super glue even on, mm -hmm. the, on the bolt threads and tighten David it up really good. It's Jerusalem artichoke. Jerusalem artichoke, yes. <laughs> you want some? <laughs> sure. All right. I'll take any plants anyone's willing to give me. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on its way. All righty, guys. So that's where we've gotten with the Alice today. Denny will be back on Wednesday without me. Hopefully, we will find him a friend um, to do the video with him. Since I hope so. Everybody's going to be gone. You have to find me a friend. I'm going to find you a friend. I don't have any, so find me a new one. I wish Jeff would come in here and sit with you for an yeah. hour, but. Uh, maybe. You could try to con him into it. I need to do that. I would. That, that's. He's a little bit crabby about the videos. Uh, I can you got him. I can be crabby. Him. Look at that. He'll. He's gonna maybe. do. Maybe. Alrighty. We'll see. we'll see. I hope you guys have a really great weekend. Denny will be back on Wednesday, and then I'll be back on Friday for. Clayton actually is going to yeah. be taking over the rest of the month. Yes, that's great. Yeah, so we're, we'll take a hiatus after we finish the Alice before we get to uh, the Anne. And Clayton will be here with his last hurrah, guys. And we're going to do, like, the ultimate briefcase. I don't know what they've, they've called it. Oh, the legacy briefcase, I think, is what we've named it. We're working to get that finished. Um, and then we'll have some more information for you on Friday. But have a good Bye, weekend. Folks. Bye.